What's up guys, here Miguel Montoya with another video. Today I am making a guide for multi-core for GB300. Once again, I remind you guys, English is not my native language. So I'll, I'll try to be as uh, well spoken as I can. First thing you must do is do a backup of your SD card. That is very important. It helps you to avoid wandering around where is your firmware if it happens an accident by chance. So make a backup of your SD card. I will share some files that were created by the programmers of Multicore and they don't mind that I share them with the public. But remember that this is alpha build for GB300, a variation of SF2000 build of the multicore. I will try to explain the best as I can, but there will be links also in the description of the video that will link you to the group of retro and else and the useful tools in case you need some help. You can always ask me in the comments. I remember that my channel is both in Portuguese and in English. I do videos in both languages. So let's get started. The folder I uploaded to the interwebs was something like this one. This has uh, more things than the original. But basically we have a card inserted. It's in the drive uh, E. And we're going to extract the GB300 multicore to the root of the SD card. Remember your drives. So we'll extract all these things to the root of the SD card. Drive E. Then we wait. It should not take very long. When asks if you want to replace the files, you say yes to all. I remember again this is an alpha version. Might be some slopes, might be some problems. There are things that you have to ask in the group and there are things that I might be capable of helping. But okay, we have done the extraction of this folder, this compressed folder. Mm, sorry. Then we have to do a very important thing. Inside this folder is tadpole. Then we're going to do a special thing to guarantee that you will, have the, will not have bootloader problems in the future. So you just go and open Tadpole. Tadpole is a multi-purpose tool for the SF2000, but it also works on GB300. So you just going to do this. Help, help, help. Fix SF2000 not booting. Attempts to fix only the firmware file, bisrv.asd. If your SF2000 won't boot, you likely hit the bootloader bug or have broken some critical files. This process attempts to restore your SF2000. This only works in the Windows OS. Do you want to continue? Yes, man, I want to continue. Please take out SD card and plug it into SF2000 and turn it on. So let's try this. We just take out the SD card of the computer. Then we're going to put it in the GB300 in this case. To see if it worked. Okay, we having a boot. 
Okay, we have a boot. We pasted the multi-core files. We have a boot. Then we're going to continue with the procedure. The surgical procedure, might I say. Okay, it's reloading the ROMs. And now I'm going to say, did it boot? Yes, it booted. Please apply the bootloader fix now to avoid this issue again. Sending you there now. And I say, okay. Patching the bootloader will require your SD card and SF2000 as well charge. Do you want to download the fix? I say, yes, I want it. You can keep this window open while we apply the fix. Eject the SD card from the computer. Now I'm going straight to the SD card and I eject the SD card from the computer. Now I'm going to put it in the SF2000. In this case, the GB300, of course. To see if... I was drawing low. To see if it can patch definitively the, the boot system. See? Update success. Okay, now we have fixed the bootloader. And we're going to put the SD card inside the computer again. Did the update complete successfully? Yes. So now we are safe and we can say OK. Now that we are safe with our card booting in a proper way, we will not have the problem with the black screen, which is a recurrent problem with these systems, SF2000 and GB300. Now that we patch the boot system, we can go to the next step. We need to make our multi-core ROMs list. I already past, pasted some folders in our SD card in the folder ROMs. I posted a folder called 826 which is the, the core of Atari. I posted a folder called GB which is for Game Boy and I posted a folder called GBA which is Game Boy Advanced. You can see if you go to cores in the root of your SD card you can see all the variable cores that you can have on your ROMs. You can have a lot of stuff. If I wanted to put some ROMs of SNES there, I'll create a folder called SNES. S-N-A-S. Super Nintendo Entertainment System. <laughs> uh, but now I just created folders for the Atari 2600, for the Game Boy, and for the Game Boy Advance. And they have some, um, some ROMs inside. So we can test the multicore. Basically, multicore is an exploit of the Game Boy Advance emulator. It's hard to explain, but you can do some reading on the group of SF2000 on the Retro and Else Discord. It's the best place to gather knowledge about consoles. To be completely honest, it's the best place. Okay, then since we are on Windows, we're going to use a script to create a ROMs list, a multi-core ROMs list that exploits Game Boy Advanced and that exists on the ROMs folder. So I just push here and this will be on the download that I will that I will have available on my channel. You just click make ROMs list. And as you can see, it make a ROMs list. You can see the instances for Atari 2600. You can see the extensions for GB, for GBA. These are stub files, 
These are links that will allow Multicore to run your games. This link will allow the console to recognize the multi-cores if I can um, if it makes sense to you so we already basically what we did was copy multi-core files patch the bootloader using tadpole then we created our lists I saw this in half. The core is the same name as the folder you have to create inside the ROMs folder. As you can see, A26, and if you go to cores, A26. I think this explains well what you have to do. So let's just hit start. Let's see. Ooh, okay. So I just want to, to show the, the damn multi core running, to be completely honest. I miss playing games, to be honest. <laughs> I think I killed this shit. Ah, okay, I didn't kill this shit. Okay, okay. Let's go berserk. Let's go Berserk. Berserk is one of few games that I know of Atari. As you might know, and if you want um, a more deep explanation, Game Boy Advance controllers are broke in the GB300. I made available a tool that was created by one of the boys in the Discord group. For the GP300 and the SF2000. You can use that tool at your own risk to manipulate the, the configurations of the controllers, the ROMs. You can use it to do a lot of stuff. But I am not, um, I am not your hero. <laughs> I am not the, the guy that will explain GP300 tool because I don't have the knowledge yet. Okay, let's go. As you can see, uh, the cores are all aspect ratio, original aspect ratio. As you can see, Tetris DX is on um, scaling 8 by 7. I think it's 8 by 7 or 10 by 9, it's something like that. But as you can see, it's original aspect ratio, which is nice. I really like the original aspect ratio. It's the only way I like to play, to be completely honest. I don't want to be a snob, but um, always original aspect ratio. Let's just play a little bit to see if it's okay. Game Boy Color is already a good performing console on the GB300, but it's very pretty on the original aspect ratio. It makes sense. This way it makes sense. If I'm being completely honest. Very pretty. Okay, let's do one last test. Some of you might know about the problem with uh, GBA BIOS. Uh, if you want to me to explain the, the, the bug that exists with GBA BIOS, I will do in another video. This video is long enough, but let me just show GBA. As you can see, these are all links. These are all links to the ROMs, basically. They tell the cores where to go pick the ROMs to run them. It's awesome. This console was on Black Friday less than ten dollars. It's amazing. Oh my my cat found something. Wait, wait. Hey. My cat found a piece of my microphone. 
Thank you, my little cat. Some things might still have difficulty on multi-core, but I can advise you this. Use uh, um, PAL ROMs. And also, one of the GBA problems is this. You have to go on joystick and do this. Change the keys for something else. Crap. Change the keys for something else, then reset them to the same position. GBA configuration mapping is uh, broken. But every time you enter a game, you change the key, then put it back as it was. It will be fine. This is uh, Paul Ron. I know it because it's in Portuguese. It's locked at 50 FPS. But as you can see, it's very good. Even Final Fantasy VI, at least on SF2000, I didn't try it yet, uh, very extensively here. But uh, even Final Fantasy VI, the Portuguese translation is cool on SF2000. Tomorrow, if I have a little bit more patience, I will show more Game Boy Advance on my modded GB300. Ozaka, my dear friend from Discord, made a bizarrev.ast for the E and Detain. Detain also created the first version, but he made a, a custom bizarrev. Dot .ast so that we can use the SF2000 screen on the GB300, which is really nice. I can't uh, use this screen for very long because it's very bright, to be honest. But the boys are working on that. Okay, you guys see the performance is okay. Just want to, to say this. If you guys have any trouble or need to know anything, this is all free. From the software um, to the knowledge, you can go on Retro Handouts, SF2000 on Discord, and there are programmers and coders that will help you there. It's a very nice group. Uh, <laughs>